close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to, find, <clears throat> try to develop a quality called mindfulness, where you keep something in mind and you stick with it. And then alertness, you watch what you're doing. This is the qualities of the mind that you can take with you wherever you go. You may have material things, but you can't, you can't carry them around all the time. Imagine carrying your house and your car and everything on your back. And it's good to think about this, because we think we, as we come into the world we run into pain. As John Sweat used to say, the fact that we're all looking for happiness means that we've got pain, we've got suffering. And for the most part we think we can get past it by gathering up material treasures. But then even that is not enough. You can get all the food you want, stockpile all the food you want, and still the mind, the body keeps getting hungry again and again and again. The things you get won't wear down, and then eventually you're going to have to leave them. And what do you have to take with you when you go? Here you have this human life, born into this human life with a human body, with human capabilities. And what's the profit you get from it? Because you do have to let go of your body at some point. What you've got left are the qualities you develop in the mind. The things you think about again and again, the things you do again and again, the things that you say again and again. These become habits. And that's the only treasure the mind has. So you want to make sure you develop good habits, like we're developing generosity as we come here. We take the precepts and we meditate. These are developing good habits in the mind. These are your treasures that you can take with you. As we develop generosity, we, we learn that happiness doesn't come from amassing a lot of things. It comes from seeing that you've got something and you have more than enough, and you can give it away. Something you might like to use. Generosity doesn't mean just seeing junk around the house and giving that away. It means seeing that things that you would really like to use yourself, but then you realize somebody else could use it too. And you take some joy in sharing it. That's a good quality to have wherever you go. The same with virtue. You realize there's things you could do that you'd like to do, but it's going to cause harm to yourself or other people, and you hold yourself back. That ability to hold yourself back, that's what keeps people from getting involved in addictions, then ruin their lives. And then there's meditation as you try to bring some control over the mind, realizing that the mind goes thinking everywhere it wants to go. It's going to create problems, so you say, no, I'll just stop and learn how to focus right here in the present moment, develop some more mindfulness, develop more alertness so I can keep track of what's going on and keep the mind going where I want it to go, not just following it wherever it happens to wander. As you develop these qualities, you've got treasures. In other words, you've got good habits. You develop discernment as to what you should and shouldn't do. And that discernment, as you learn to understand cause and effect, is something wherever you go. As John Lee says, all you need is just a knife, say a machete, and go into the wilderness. If you've got discernment, you can set yourself up. In other words, you don't need that much in terms of material things if you have discernment. So that's what we're trying to develop ultimately, is the discernment that understands what's useful and what's not, what's good for us and good for other people, what's not good for us and not good for other people, and is willing and able to make the choices. Because it means not only seeing these things, but also talking yourself into doing what's right, even though you may not want to do it right away. And talking yourself into not doing the things you'd like to do, but are going to give bad results in the long term. So you see the truth, and then you're willing to follow along with it. And you have the strength. The strength comes from your concentration. So that's what we're working on as we focus on the breath, to give the mind some strength. So that when it sees something that should be done, and it can tell itself that you want to do it, you have the strength to carry through. These are your treasures. Once you have these treasures, then you can pick up material wealth wherever you want it. It's all lying around. You don't have to carry it around so much. You can pick up happiness wherever you want it. And that's when the mind is really wealthy. It comes into the world and sees all kinds of possibilities in the world. It makes the most of them, so that when it leaves the world it still has good things. It's left good things behind as a gift to the world and takes good things with it. That's a life well spent. So as we practice generosity, observe the precepts, remember we're gathering up treasures in the mind. Even more so when we're meditating, the mind becomes wealthy. When you have this kind of wealth inside, then you have more than enough to use wherever you go. No matter how poor the circumstances may be outside, inside, you've got what, it need, what you need in order to make the most of it. 
Think about the Ajans in the forest tradition. Many of them were born in very poor families, but they all had the sermon to realize. If they, if they wanted to find happiness in life, they had to train their minds. They were fortunate enough to find good teachers, and they were able to carry through. So we have their dharma, and we have them now as our good teachers. So it's our opportunity to carry through. Don't let the fact that you have wealth around you distract you from the fact that you've got to develop wealth inside if you really want to be safe. <laughs>